uh, the process that you might have to go through if changing payroll. So if I go to the first tab here and I hold control down and I go down to the payroll, we went to last time, we went to the overview and then we ran payroll, which is in the run payroll on the right hand side. Now this processed in essence, the payroll checks and the withholdings and the impacts on the financial statements from the transactions. Now we just wanna point out that with payroll, it can be a little bit more complex to make adjustments to payroll. We can't just go in and adjust the paychecks as easily because we have to be careful about all the withholdings and calculations related to the payroll taxes. Also, when trying to practice and learn payroll, it can be difficult with a practice problem because the payroll works best when it's running real time. In other words, if you're working this practice problem at some point into the future, if it's too far into the future, then you might have difficulty running the payroll because it works best in real time. The other issue with that, we do have payroll courses to kind of dive into this in more detail, but the other problem with payroll is that payroll looks quite different from the first quarter to the fourth quarter because there's gonna be caps that could be hit. And th those are most clear when you see the, the FUTA tax, Federal Unemployment Tax Act, which has a fairly low tax. So the taxes with relation to that particular payroll tax will be a lot different from quarter one to quarter two to quarter three to quarter four, in which case quarter four, unless you have new employees, you're not gonna see much of that tax. And the Social Security has a cap as well, although it's a lot higher of a cap. So if anybody's going to hit it, they wouldn't hit it until quarter three or quarter four or something like that. But you don't get to see those changes if you only process one quarter. In other words, if you're trying to uh, process or see what's going on with your 941s when you process them on a quarterly basis, the typical thing is to say, okay, well, it's quarter two. I'm going to compare what happened to quarter one to quarter two. But things can be a little bit different because of these caps that people can hit on it. And so that's something that we gotta, you know, you gotta just kind of be aware of and it's a difficulty to run the payroll problems. Now also, uh, what was impacted on the financial statements are multiple accounts here. So we've got, of course, the liabilities that were impacted, you'll recall, for the withholdings, for our withholdings and the employee withholdings. We've got then on the income statement, we've got the wages and the tax accounts that were impacted and we have a whole bunch of other payroll for uh, reports those are going to help us to report the payroll tax stubs to the employees on a year-to-date basis as well as a paycheck by paycheck basis and do the 941s to 940s the w2s and w3s therefore it's not as easy for us to just make a change in other words if i'm saying there's a check that is incorrect normally i, I can go okay well i'll just go to the balance sheet here and i'm going to go into the uh, cash and I can say, okay, this check, maybe it's wrong for whatever reason. It doesn't match what actually was deposited into the bank account or something like that when we do the bank reconciliation. Well, I can't just go in here and, and change the amount of the check, clearly. It's gonna cause an issue. And even with the dates, we wanna kind of be careful with that because if I, if I mess up the reporting, the way, if I don't do the payroll, within the QuickBooks system, then the reports will not match and your W-2s won't match and your you know your calculations for the payroll taxes and all that kind of stuff will get all messed up. So that's why the adage uh, for payroll is typically do it first the first time uh, and measure, measure twice, cut once, as opposed to tinkering until you get it right. Some things are great for tinkering until you get it right. Some things are better off to get it right the first time, measure twice, cut once, payroll, better off to get it the first time. If you do make an error, then typically you'd need to avoid the check as opposed to deleting it because usually in practice, we wanna make sure that we have a, a paper trail of the data because employees are the most likely person to sue us, unfortunately, as well. And it's, and it's most likely that we're gonna run into problems that we want to see a paper trail with. So I want to be as transparent as possible uh, with everything that we're putting into the system. Now in our practice problem, so you usually have to avoid it and then you'd have to process the payroll again so that the system can process the payroll check properly and do all the reporting properly. Okay, so, but in our practice problem, we made an error in, in the recording of one of the taxes 
And I want it to tie out to our practice problem over here to this paycheck that's going to be on our bank reconciliation. So we're going to do something that I don't recommend doing in practice, but we're going to do in the practice problem to make the bank reconciliation correct. So, and the, and the error was in the calculation of, uh, of Social Security and Medicare. So, so just to note the issue so you can see how these kind of problems happen with payroll taxes uh, and, and how they can get kind of complex, you know, all of a sudden, right? We had, we had an error in the calculation of, I think, the Social Security tax, right? So if you got an error in the Social Security tax calculation, what is that going to impact? Well, if I go if I go to the balance sheet, the balance sheet got deleted here. I'm going to go from 010123 to 123123 and run it. Then we're going to have <clears throat> we're going to have this liability that's going to be impacted here for the taxes, but it's not only just going to be the employee portion, but also the employer portion because there's a matching thing. So if I got it wrong on the employee side, it's likely that we got it wrong on both sides. And then on the income statement, there's going to be an impact on both the wages because the wages include the employee portion of the tax and on the taxes here, which are payroll taxes, because those are the taxes that we pay over and above. So you can see just this little kind of mis calculation can get quite complex in the number of things that are going to be impacted also the other reports are going to be impacted the w2 stub or the paycheck stubs are impacted and so on